As a video game player, you know you have to dig through dirt and grime to get the materials to raise your characters, whether you grind for them or succumb to tactics that the rich people do and pay for it. Please don't do that, it's just not worth it. We all have had that moment where you experience a material drought. On the other side of the coin, every gacha game has had the pleasure of giving you a hot shower of rewards to wash off all the filth that you've been carrying before the update with an update. Under normal circumstances, this is a generous size of rewards that may help you half raise the new character that you just got. However, the thing with Withering Waves is, they went one step further and said, yeah, why don't you just raise three or four characters instead? It is no exaggeration to say that version 1.3 of Withering Waves offers more resources than you know what to do with. This is a stark difference from other versions that had way less rewards. This begs the question though, with all of these rewards being given out, then what's the point of using your stamina on raising characters if you essentially have them raised with the free materials? Will the game get boring once we use all of our wave plates to reach the absolute peak potential of our entire cast of characters? My name is Void Enigma, and I'll be discussing if the amount of rewards that they've given us is simply too much, or how they will impact the future of the game. Let's begin with tallying up the total rewards that you can receive from this update. 2 million credits from this event by doing small tasks for a week an absurd amount of forte and weapon level up materials of your choice, a decent amount of EXP and weapon material, and the icing on the cake is echo level up materials and tuners. Man, this is kind of insane. Even though you would normally get a lot of materials from the elusive realm shop, since they removed it during this particular update, don't worry, it's going to return. We will get them anyways, but we get more. You're getting all of these materials by just raising characters, raising echoes, and raising their forte and weapons. The rewards are well worth it, even if you don't have any characters to raise, and they will really help you with raising characters in the future. Now with that being said, as I just mentioned, there is one major drawback. What if you're a good nugget and decided to raise your characters beforehand? There are more responsible people who spend their time raising all of their desired characters and only use about 3-6 to six units to clear all of the content in the game. They are essentially punished for doing so because they will not be able to get these materials without actually raising a new character. An easy fix is to allow players to retroactively get these rewards, which I'm sure you have told in the feedback. Go ahead and submit the feedback if you want this issue fixed. But I suppose that that defeats the purpose of the event to raise new characters. The idea behind this is to raise Shorekeeper and then the new character coming with Jion, Yohu. If you're in this camp and you don't want to raise new characters, you would have to go back and raise a brand new character, get their forte to level 8, which can be a bit overwhelming, especially for a character that you don't plan on using. It's not a requirement, but who doesn't want to miss out on free stuff? Despite all of this, the insane amount of rewards is a godsend because the drought in materials was beginning to weigh on a lot of players. Especially when everyone received the free Shen Liao. They pretty much addressed this issue immediately because it was probably sent in the feedback, so we have another case of, you guessed it, the devs listened. I'm still okay with this because most of the people who play this game don't have every character raised and there's one or two characters that they wish they could raise. So they should be able to raise one or two characters to reach this quota, but still, is this entirely too much materials? Now I know you may be thinking, are you crazy to act such a thing? Is it too much? Of course not! Well, it's a legitimate question. What if we got this amount of rewards every update? What would you spend your wave plates on when every character is raised? Sure, you could prep for the next character, but then once you actually prep for the next character, which can take you a few weeks, then what are you going to do with the rest of your time? The point of the wave plates is to raise your character, and if every patch they give you enough materials to raise two to three characters, then it's going to eventually get to a point where you have way too much materials. Personally, I don't mind as this lets me invest my time into things that I want to do on the game, like exploring and doing challenges. But as of recently, I've had way less time to spend on Withering Waves or games in general. When Genshin was my solo game, period, I had things 100%ed within days of the new update. But since I'm playing so many different games now, working, making content on this channel, which takes up a whole lot of my day, but I do it for you all. So go ahead and drop a subscribe for me. But being able to focus on WooWa for less time than normal is fine. However, there are those who finish the entirety of Black Shores on day one, and that's kind of insane. 
which means that they won't really be touching Wuwa for the rest of the six weeks that the update's here for. I guess they'll be doing the events, but that's about it. Either way, this might finally be a time for you to actually take on the real endgame of Wuwa, perfecting artifacts. As much of a cliche thing as that is to say, I did make a video discussing how artifacts aren't the worst thing to actually raise, but as of lately, and please tell me if I'm the only one here, but my echo luck has been shit. I find more and more often than not, I'm getting double crit on healing echoes when I want energy recharge, and I get HP and defense on the attack echoes that I want on my main carries. Nonetheless, once you have a stock of surplus materials, I suppose it's time to take on the tacit fields. It's the worst way to spend your wave plates, but if every character is maxed out, then what other choice do you have? The tacit field grind is truly an endless mode because you're going to have to gear out so many characters that they keep on releasing, and if you're not getting the perfect substats, then you're actually going to just keep spending your wave plates on them. It's possible that this was the design at the beginning, as the actual material gain that you get from the tacit fields is beyond abysmal. Either way, the fact of the matter is that we, as a community, decided this outcome. Whether you sent in feedback or not, Kuro Game has noticed that raising characters is taking a tad bit too long for a few people, and they wanted to advance that, or remove a few pieces of the puzzle. The 2 million credits alone is going to be so much help. I mean, take a look at the amount of gold boxes that I have in addition to that. I can probably completely gear out a character with these materials alone. I also really love the fact that they use a different style of box that's different from the Battle Pass boxes. Like, they really went all out to spice up the item rewards. I know for a fact that many of you are excited to finally raise your Tao Chi and Junshin and to actually take on more challenges with them. I mean, you could definitely do more in the game if you have more raised characters and this unlocks way more things to do. You could have been stumped on a hologram or something like that, but now you have the resources to raise your character even more or build up a new character that will help you beat those holograms. Since there's no crowning feature in this game, like in Genshin Impact, you have the freedom to raise those key forte upgrades to level 10. It's a great time to get your characters raised and it'll still feel like you earned it. I think Wuwa has reached a fine line of rewards to raise characters and still have fun with the game. This honestly just encourages more players to raise those few f extra fortes to level 10 instead of stopping at 8. It helps reduce burnout because you get to enjoy the characters sooner and try things like a taunt also if you choose to. So to answer the question posed at the beginning of the video, is this too much? I don't think so, because the most fun thing about the game is not raising the characters, it's the exhilarating combat and challenges that we have yet to explore in this great game. Go ahead and comment down below if you enjoy the influx of materials and who you were finally able to raise with them. Make sure to subscribe and like this video as that's the best way to support the channel so more videos can come your way. This has been Void Enigma, and until next time, Enigma out.